Richmond, Kentucky, on a farm just outside of town, a farmer was transporting hay bales around his field when he came across a garbage bag in the middle of the field. Thinking it was just rubbish, he went to have a look, but was shocked to find a head inside. He called the police straight away, and after searching all the area, they found five other bags, each with body parts inside. But who was this, and how did they end up here? Hi, my name's Sarah Jade, and welcome to my channel, where we talk about true crime, unsolved cases, and more. Now let's get on with this week's case. Christina Markham was born in 1983 and came from Richmond in Kentucky. She was described as spoil and pretentious. Although her parents divorced when she was quite young, this didn't stop her getting everything she wanted in life. She grew up wanting for nothing and played off her parents against each other. As she grew up, she became deviant and unruly and would act out in any opportunity. She got a thrill out of the attention and didn't care if it was good or bad. Her friends described how she always wanted the best of everything and all the newest clothes and cars. Not wanting to work for it herself, however, Christina wanted to marry a rich man who would provide for her and look after her. She started to date a string of men, but none of them were quite what she was looking for, which was tall, dark, handsome and very, very rich. In 2008, at the age of 25, it looked like Christina's dreams were going to come true when she met Jason Singleton, who was an up-and-coming computer executive. Jason was 37 years old and was also born in Richmond, Kentucky. He came from a good family where his dad worked in football and his mum was a medical professional. After graduating from high school, he joined the army and became a computer specialist. This later turned into a lucrative career where he joined a Lexington-based computer company. He was the manager of the computer services department and all his colleagues described him as a great person to work for. Jason was seven years older than Christina, and although he had a great career, he was very unlucky in love. He'd been married and divorced twice by the age of 32, and said he just hadn't found the right person. When Jason met Christina at a Christmas party, he was smitten, and they hit it off straight away. They soon started dating, and within two weeks they were engaged with a $20,000 engagement ring. Everyone thought they were moving too fast, but they couldn't get enough of each other, with Jason buying them a new house just a couple of months later. Although they were madly in love, their relationship was very volatile. They would get in these huge arguments and become jealous of one another. These emotions mixed with alcohol were a recipe for disaster, and it wasn't long before the arguments turned violent. On one occasion, they had been at a friend's party, and Jason just started speaking to another girl. Christina lost it and became very angry and jumped on his back. Over the next two years, their arguments became more frequent and more violent, when in October 2010, Christina was arrested for throwing a mobile phone at Jason's head and splitting his head open. Jason obtained an emergency protection order against Christina and she was arrested for assault. She spent the night in jail and after she was released, the couple realised that things weren't working and decided to call it their engagement and split up. Christina didn't waste any time and soon she was dating her old school boyfriend, Nick Markham. They got engaged and were married just two weeks later. Jason also didn't wait around too long. On the 17th of December 2010, he was introduced to Angela Fraser. Angela was also a divorcee and had two children of her own. They had met one night when Angela was out with her cousin, Vanessa Goodin. The couple hit it off straight away and they ended up getting married just three days later on the 20th of December. Angela then moved into the family home, which was 110 Forest Hill Drive in Richmond, which was the house that he had bought with Christina. Although Christina and Jason were married to two different people, they really hadn't moved on and were finding it difficult to get over each other. Jason slipped into depression and started taking methamphetamines to cope. Christina, on the other hand, couldn't get over another woman living in her house. And just three weeks after Jason was married, Christina was back in his life. Christina would turn up at the house around 4.30 every morning and would just honk her horn until Jason came out. She would also ring the house over 20 to 30 times a day and would threaten to harm Angela on numerous occasions. During the first month of Angela's and Jason's marriage, they called the police over six times because of Christina. 
For example, on the 11th of January, Angela called the police as Christina had thrown a rock through their window. On the 14th of January 2011, Angela again called the police at 2 o'clock in the morning, reporting that Christina was damaging her car and threatening her. After damaging her car, the two girls got into a huge fight, and Angela, thinking that her husband would stick up for her, was shocked to discover that he admitted that he was still in love with Christina and actually wanted to be with her. He completely changed and told her he wanted her to get out of the house and he was going to leave with Christina and when he got back he expected her to be gone. Angela left that night with her friend Sean and knew that her marriage was over but she still wanted to go back to the house to get her things. Because they were married the police informed Jason that Angela owned half the house and she had the right to go back to the house and get all her stuff. So that Sunday when she went back to the house to get all her stuff Jason went to his parents house. Angela went back to the house that day and started to collect up all her stuff. However, it was taking longer than she thought, so she decided to stay the night and leave in the morning. The next morning, she called her cousin Vanessa around 9am, but no one had heard from her since. The next day, her mum became worried as she knew she wouldn't just abandon her children, who had been at her house that day. So she decided to call the police. Just two hours later, and her car was found burning, on mile marker 101 on the I-75. On the 19th of January, just a couple of days later, a farmer who was moving hay bales around his field came across a bag and inside was a head. When the police got there, they searched the whole area and found five other bags. After examining the body, they identified it as Angela. But how did she get here? When examining her body, they found that her nose was broken, her ribs were fractured on both sides, and she had cuts, bruises and tears all over her skin. She'd also been stabbed and her tattoos had been removed, but the cause of death was strangulation. As with many of these cases, their first suspect was her husband Jason, so they got a search warrant for his house. After searching the property, they removed a circular saw, various types of knives, blood samples from the carpet and the drains, and boxes of rubbish. Jason, however, denied being involved. He said he had been at his parents' house that day and hadn't heard from her since the day before. Two days later, when Jason goes to the shopping mall, where he tries to steal a pair of trousers from one of the stores. The guard approached him and just asked him to see his receipt. When he pulled out his gun, pointed at him before running away. The guard started chasing him and followed him to a nearby trucking company. When Jason got to the trucking office, he gathered up all the staff, threatening them with his gun, and put them into one room, holding them hostage. Then proceeded a standoff with the police, where eventually they were able to shoot him without killing him and arrested him on the spot. When they got Jason into custody and were finally able to question him, he told them, I wish you'd killed me, as I've done something so terrible, I can't even talk about it. He tells them he would tell them everything, as long as they could protect Christina and she wouldn't get arrested. Jason at the time smelt very strongly of smoke and was covered in this black soot from a fire. When they had been searching Jason's house, they also found that he'd tried to burn something in the fire. He'd cut up some of the carpet and some of the floorboards and was trying to burn it that morning. However, one of his neighbours had caught the fire brigade and he had to phone them up to cancel the call. They were eventually able to question Jason and find out what happened that day. He said he had been there when Angela died but he hadn't been the one to do it. Christina had strangled her. He told them how he had wanted to get back with Christina, but Angela had refused to leave the house. That night, he'd been speaking to Christina, and he realised that although they had been married, he hadn't filed the paperwork, which meant Angela wouldn't be entitled to anything. So the next morning, him and Christina decided to go over to the house to find the paperwork before Angela did. But when they got there, they found Angela asleep on the sofa. He watched Angela as Christina searched the house and soon they were able to find what they came for. However, when they were about to leave the house, Angela woke up. The girls started to get into a huge argument and Jason had had enough and decided to go outside for a cigarette. When he eventually came back into the house, he found Christina standing over Angela, strangling her. He tried to get her off, but it was too late. She had gone. Christina had then persuaded him to dispose of the body. He told them he'd loved her so much and just wanted to help her. 
So he cut up the body, put it in plastic bags and spread it across the field before burning her car. After this, he couldn't live with what he'd done. So he decided he wanted to die by cop suicide. So that's why he went to the mall that morning. And so he knew that if he held people up, the police would have come and he hoped they would have shot and killed him. The police, however, believed that he had killed her because he was angry that she didn't want to move out of the house and he wanted Christina to move back in. He was also angry as he had just found out that Angela had reported him to the police for making fake Florida licenses so he could smuggle drugs back into Kentucky. Jason was eventually found guilty of murder and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He also received 10 years for unlawful imprisonment. They also found out that Jason was in $30,000 worth of debt. His house was in foreclosure. Christina started to play the victim and told the police how she had turned up that day and found Jason strangling Angela. She became so scared she just went along with it that she thought she would be next. Her defence described how she had been suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder from all the abuse that she had suffered from Jason. The prosecution, however, told a different story and called her a masterful liar who had manipulated her ex-boyfriend into killing his wife. They told the jury about her past altercations with Jason, how she had been the aggressor and how she had inserted herself into their lives, harassing them on a daily basis, breaking their windows and even urinating on their front porch to mark her territory. After the incident, she had also provided Jason with clean clothes and he had been wearing Christina's husband's clothes when he was caught. She visited him in jail and went to all his court appearances, all the things someone wouldn't do if they were scared of somebody. The prosecution finally decided they both acted together and it didn't matter who had made the final blow. Christina was finally found guilty and was sentenced to 30 years in prison on March 2014 and received one additional year for promoting contraband in prison. Thank you for watching and if you like this video be sure to check out one of our other videos here. Thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one. You call me a saint but you know I'm a stranger, a willing and